The hurt that comes from loved ones and family is completely different from that um, which comes from a stranger. I've received a lot of emails and even comments about this, you know, where people are saying the same things. A lot of believers in Christ are talking about how, you know, they're being hurt by their family members, a lot of their attacks, the indifference towards them is coming from family. And it's very hard. It's very difficult because this is where you may want to just comply. Okay. Or it's a sort of hurt where if you're not careful, you can become resentful towards them. You can become angry. You can be in a place where it's hard for you to forgive them. Right. And then there are these mixed feelings as far as what do I need to do? Because sometimes you have family that they are, they're doing these hurtful things, but then they still, they just want to, oh, just forget that it happened and let's just move on. And so you are conflicted in your feelings. You don't know what to do. You're trying to pretend that everything is okay. Um, if you try to talk about it, it's blown off or like, no, that's not how it happened. So you end up being frustrated. And then now you're trying to deal with the principles of God on forgiveness and it frustrates you. And then if God calls you away, then you're questioning whether God really called you away because you're supposed to forgive. And sometimes your family saying to you, yeah, you're supposed to forgive. If you're truly a child of God, then how come you're not dealing with us? And so there may be promises that things will be better. So you're tempted to go back on what God said to you. And then you're wondering, did God really say this? And there are all these things. And then you may completely pull away from your family as the Lord asked, you know, the, the ones that's doing wrong as he asked you. But then you're looking at other people who have healthy relationships with their families. And, you know, we're in a society where people are looking at your family your family uh, relationship to determine, well, if you are a stable person, if you are a stable man, stable woman, well, why don't they have a good relationship with their mother? Why don't they have a good relationship with their father? Why don't they have a good relationship with their siblings? And there is also the automatic thing of there's nothing that your parent could do. There's nothing that your sibling could do that could be so bad. And a lot of times you're going to find people, they've either, either they have that family where they can make up and they can talk and they can... They can, uh, they can discuss the problem and really just work it out and continue to be together. Or they just got to a place that they're like, no matter what happened, I'm just going to be there. And so they're around all the toxicity and they're all around all of that. But they just learn how to adjust. They learn what not to say to aggravate the situation. They learn how far they need to go. They know when to leave. But even that in itself is bondage. So guys, I want to talk to you about that. You may think to yourself, or am I even born to these individuals? Because you may have a level of empathy, loyalty, understanding, and patience that your own flesh and blood does not have. You can forgive them over and over again for things. You can say that you're sorry, but they're not going to do that. They may offend you, hurt your feelings. You may be upset for a while, but you always go back to them because this is my sister. This is my cousin. This is my aunt. This is my mother. And so you find that that level of loyalty that you may have towards them, they don't have it for you. If you upset them, they are going to destroy you. Okay. They're going to say the most hurtful things to you. They're probably not going to apologize no matter how much you're trying to maybe keep the, the, the argument from going too far, they just take it all the way. They'll say the most hurtful things to you. They're going to remind you of things that you've done back in the past. And so, and, and because, you know, you grew up with them. So if you grow up with them, they know all your secrets. They know all the dirt that you've done. But on the flip side, so do you. You know all the secrets. You know all the dirt that they done. You know that they peed the bed. You know they used to be, you know... You know, doing all types of little things. You know the same things about them. You know their secrets just like they know yours. You know their habits just like they know yours. And so you're in this position of whether you're going to end up when they're hurting you, okay, and you're a child of God, you're saved now. They're hurting you and they're saying all these things about you in the past. You're trying to, you're either going to just back up, but then you're filled with hurt and pain for the things that they said to you. That yet you're still going around trying to apologize and make it work. Or 
they do that so much to you that one day you say something back to them about what they've done and then it becomes this big nasty dirty argument or they completely bottom out like you said the worst thing to them even though they have been just been in the habit of just saying hurting and cutting things to you and so that's what you're going to find a lot of times you're going to have a family member that has the the tongue of fire say any and anything to you hurt everybody's feelings they're known for that but the minute you say one thing to them oh they're going to fold and it's going to be like it's the worst thing you did and all of that and you will find that trying to get close to them again is going to be impossible so sometimes you will realize that you have a loyalty to your father that he may not have to you. You may have loyalty and empathy and sister, sis and sympathy to your sister that she does not have for you. You may have loyalty and empathy. You just have this. You're my family. I'm going to do what I need to do for us to be close. You may have that for your brother. You may have that for your mother. But you realize they don't have that same thing for you. They do not feel the same way. They will embarrass you. They will say things in front of anybody about you. They do not support you. You will support them in things. They will not support you. You would have been there for them, but they can still turn around and just dog you out like you've never been nothing and you've been the worst thing. And so now you're struggling with, okay, I'm supposed to forgive them. How, you know, how do I do that? Now you're, you're thinking forgiveness means I continue to have access. If they need me, I'm just going to go and all of these different things. And then you're there and then you make up. Maybe something brings everybody back together. But the, if it's, if the situation is brought up again, you're going to have to just Take all the blame. Don't say anything because then if you talk about it, it's going to flare up into an argument again. You don't want that to happen again, right? Or you just have to just let them tell it their way. This is how everything happened. You started everything. Okay, guys, I got interrupted for a second. So basically, you're just going to have to just whatever they say, whatever their version of the story is, you're just going to have to go with that to keep the peace. And therefore, it's never resolved or everybody just becomes friends again. Everything goes right again, but the situation is never dealt with. So then you, you, you're experiencing this hurt and this pain and you're trying to figure out, well, Lord, how do I walk in love and forgiveness? Well, oftentimes believers feel if I'm walking in love and forgiveness, it means that I remain, I stay, I love the hell out of them. I love them no matter what they've done to me. This is not it. What people tend to forget, let me move this over here. What people tend to forget about is wisdom, discretion, and understanding. God is not holding unforgiveness of, in, against people that he has had to, to put in hell. He's not holding unforgiveness and malice against anyone when he says, depart from me. So we have to learn how to follow after the principles of God. So what that means is, you may wonder if you are, you're from the same family. How come I feel this way? I believe in loyalty and empathy and forgiveness and being there and supporting. But then maybe my siblings, my relatives are not this way towards me. Well, it's kind of hard to say. But a lot of the choices that we make, one thing we do know, the spiritual side is, when people are doing wrong and evil, or they're doing things that's really inconsiderate, it gets down to, okay, basic manners that people choose not to, to apply to certain people. Those who they find to be of non-importance and those that they think that are important. Then their generational curses and gaps that can come down the pipes. And then most importantly, it boils down to choice because people make a choice in their behavior. They don't have to be rude. They don't have to say those things, but they choose to do that. So in, in actuality, people override what they may call their conscience and their inner voice, they no longer have those boundaries. They just say and do anything to you. They'll come over that gate at any time and hurt you and destroy you because one thing is that they're, they, they don't have any sort of a connection with God. Hold on, guys, I got to sneeze. So it really boils down to they're standing with God and their relationship with God. They can override the 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 warnings and the that pause that the lord places in all of us to not say something they're used to overriding that and saying and doing whatever they want to and not only that they become used to the fact that you're going to be there no matter what 
So then those lines and those boundaries are no longer there because they have cursed you out before. They've insulted you. They've insulted you in front of your children, in front of your spouse, they embarrassed you in front of guests. They've bawled out your secret at the, at the family gathering. They've said all these things and you came right back. And so now that's, that's the problem. And then you do not have the wisdom of God to know that, no, there is a standard that God adheres to. He gives us an opportunity to get it right. He gives us plenty of, of olive branches and chances and mercies and grace, but it's up to us. Are you going to follow my principle or not? Because yes, I do love you, but guess what? Sin will separate you from God. So if they're doing certain things that's wrong and that's evil continuously, there's going to be a separation and God pulls you from that. He's going to pull you away from it because he may have you there for a certain period of time and allow you to show the mercy, the grace, the kindness, the love towards them, the empathy, the long suffering, but he's going to pull you away because guys, and, and it feels strange, but you're not in malice and you're not being, you're not in unforgiveness. But see, sometimes you may come from a family where you're not used to being protected. You're used to being hurt. You're used to being let down. And so you think this is what God has for you. No, here it is. This has happened. Now he's going to pull you away from that. Why? He's placed something within you that maybe your family members don't have or choose to override. And God sees this in you. So he's placed the love, the empathy, and all of that in you, the long suffering, the loyalty. But it's not for it to be destroyed by your family or anybody for that, for that, for that matter. So what do you do? What you don't want to do is because the longer you stay, you're going to become like them. You realize if you're going to roll with them, you're either going to have to sit in silence in your pain or you're going to have to learn to go toe to toe with them. So you're busting them out. You're saying things. You're being nasty. You're fighting physically or whatever. You're saying ugly things to them. And so you're getting contaminated. So what happens is that love and that, that, that loyalty, that empathy that the Lord has placed in you, that gift, it's getting destroyed. You're getting hard. You're getting defensive. You're easily offended. So now you're a problem in other arenas. And then sometimes you have children who are exposed to these types of behaviors and what's happening, they're being affected. Your generation, your seed is being affected. So what God, when he pulls you away, is to protect you, to protect what's within you so that now you can put this to your family. You may have to get it out of your mind about the the blood family you have over here that's acting up. And now you invest in the family that you now have. You may have children. You invest in your children. You give them what you did not get. You be the mother. You be the father. You be the parent. You give them the protection and the loyalty that you did not get. But you want to make sure that you're healed through Christ. You want to make sure that in everything you're giving God your heart and you're sharing with him. Because if not, you're going to go to one extreme or another. If you did not get anything from your family, then you're going to totally spoil your kids. If you were disciplined too much by your family, then you're going to be like, oh, I'm not going to discipline my children. And now your kids are out there. Okay. Or you're coming over and because you're not healed, you're actually doing what we're going to call displacement. And you start to put some things off on your spouse, your kids, because you're frustrated with your family. When you have a lot of pain and things in your heart, you're not going to be able to do God's work. You're going to mess people up because you're still bleeding. You're shattered. You have sharp edges. So God made you this way so that now you can protect that and you can give that to others. You may not be married. You may not have children, but there are people in the world, individuals that you can be a blessing in their lives. You can be kind to, but the bottom line is you want to always be praying and getting before the Lord and letting him show you who you can be a blessing to and who you can invest in, right? In this way. Because the truth be told, you will meet a lot more dark, evil people than those who are actually genuine. Okay? One of the things God keeps us, when he pulls us away, he keeps us hidden. You may feel hidden. You're kind of away from everyone. But he can use us to do a lot of things. Your empathy, your long-suffering, your love. You can. It would allow you to be able to, to minister to people in a way that... That because it's coming from a, a, a heart and a place that's truly genuine, you will land an impact even if you're planting a seed. 
And then, as I said, with your own pe your own family. Because sometimes you have, you know, you want to put into your children what you did not get. You want to rebuild and repair what's been destroyed as a result of your family and your children and your family and your wife or your husband being exposed to that. It is hard when it's your family, but God wants you to know that he's pulled you from that and he's protecting you. Don't look at the world standards, right? The world would say, oh, someone may say, oh, he doesn't have a good relationship with his mother or his father or what's going on. But you're always going to find you have at least one family member that's actually okay. It may be a relative. And so, guys, you just, you, as God leads you, you have that relationship. But, you know, guess what? You're not going to the, the family gatherings. You're not going to certain things. And as the Lord heals you, you are not going to feel lonely and you're not going to feel sad. You're not going to have anything against them. You will begin to pray for them. The Lord will have you do that. You're going to pray for them. He's going to help you with the, the pain and the things that they may have put upon you. And he's going to heal you. And he will use you in other people's lives. He'll use you in ministry. And he's, he wants to protect what he's placed in you so that you can invest that in your family. And you may say, some of you may say, oh, my kids are just as crazy and this is going on. My brothers and sisters, don't give up because even you, you pray that there'll be restoration in your family with your children. But you, if, even if that does not happen or not the way you would like, you are living and you are right now you're praying because down the lineage through their seed, a new generation will be raised up because of your obedience to separate yourself from the toxicity and in loving them, even if they don't truly come and, ex and accept it from you. And then, as I said, you may have little ones right now. You love on them, guys. You, you allow the Lord to heal you. You love them. You give them and you build with them. This is your family. These are your children. God willing, they'll grow. God willing, they'll be married. God willing, they have children and you have grandchildren to enjoy. So invest here as God leads you. Invest in other people if you don't have children. God will bring people to your side that will be family to you. And sometimes, guys, you have to be okay with the fact that the Lord will put you by yourself with him. He will do that. The word of God says, he who loves a mother, father, brother, sister more than me is not worthy of me. So guess what? You may want them to, you, you may want to have that perfect family setting and you're doing everything in your power to, to create that, but they have to want to. And if they don't want to, you have to accept that. But sometimes they want to mistreat you, but they want you around so they can keep being this way or they, they'll salvage whatever good, they, you know, whatever things they want from you. But sometimes, guys, you have to just obey the Lord and walk away. Leave it alone. Close the door. Cry before the Lord. Pour your heart out before the Lord. And you know what? Don't necessarily be in the habit of telling people what had happened. Everybody don't necessarily need to know what happened. If the Lord leads it, you know, puts it in your heart to talk to someone, you know, because sometimes you may need to speak to somebody and there's someone that you can trust that maybe you can talk about some things and share some things with them about what happened, then that's fine as well. But use discretion. You never want to talk to someone when you're just in a place of pain and hurt and just picking up the phone and I'm going to say drunk dialing. You're not drinking, but you're drunk with pain. All right. So you just call in and just, just point out your heart. Because you just want to be heard. The greatest pain comes from that of your family. They hurt you. They dig up your past. They do whatever. But the Lord is showing you. You ask for forgiveness for the things that you have done. You ask the Lord to forgive you. If you have an opportunity, you can, you can apologize to your family. Okay? Um, and if they're just the type that they're just going to take it to the next level, you ask the Lord to forgive you. And then you let the Lord build you and show you who you are in him. Run to the father. Let him restore you. And know that it is okay to close those doors. It says in the last days, mother's going to turn against daughters, daughters against mother, mother-in-law, father-in-law, sister, brother. People going to be doing all types of things. And really when they do things that's ungodly and hurtful, it's because they don't know God. 
So you really want to pray for their soul. You want your anger or your hurt. You don't want that to be to the point that you don't care and you don't care if they die and go to hell because that's crazy. There's nothing anyone could do to us on this planet, guys. I know there's some other things that we may think about in which it's like, no, yeah, they just, they deserve to go to hell, you know, but that shouldn't be because we deserve to go to hell too. You know what I'm saying? So you never want to wish that on anybody. And even if you feel in your heart that you would like to, for them to die and go to hell, you need to go to God and pray and ask him to take that out of you because then you're going to see them in hell if you still have that mindset. There are lots of people right now who are separated from their family, their loved ones and everything. And they don't have those relationships. And even when they've tried to make it up, they're not and whatever. And then, you know, their mother or their mother's doing evil siblings fathers all of that and so something that's going on uniformly and so what i'm seeing across the board is a lot of people's just being set apart and it's not by chance that's happening so be comfortable with where the lord has placed you don't harp on it meaning don't you don't want to sit there and meditate too much on that and let the enemy put in your head oh maybe you're doing something wrong because what he wants to do is get back into that snare because that's what it is get into an argument you get you're, you're you're so hurt you can't focus on your prayer you can't focus on the work that god wants you to do you got to go through after god has been building it's like you go back to them and it's like jenga they pull that piece that sensitive part, that, that thing that's going to hurt you and completely bring you down and you come tumbling down in a heap again, right? And they're not going to help you. Be okay with a separation. Know that your, what Jesus said, who is my mother? Who is my father? He who does the will of my father in heaven. That is my mother. That is your father. You have lots of brothers and sisters in Christ. That's all around the globe. Technology has brought us together where we can encourage one another. And guess what? When that great sound, that great shout comes, we will all be caught up to meet him in the air and we will all be together for all eternity. You have brothers and sisters in the Lord all over. Don't be discouraged. You're not alone.